Climate change is one of the biggest problems that we face today. Millions could suffer hunger, diseases, coastal flooding as a result of climate change. We may be beyond the point of no return. Scientists believe that we have no choice but to consider geoengineering. This is large-scale manipulation of the Earth. Such as spraying sulfate aerosols into the ozone layer, in order to increase the reflectivity of the planet. But geoengineering is very, very risky. We have never attempted these technologies on such a large scale, so we could end up destroying the entire ozone layer. I want to consider a class of solutions that have never been considered before. Human engineering. It involves the biomedical modification of human beings. I'll give four examples. Here's one. 18 percent of greenhouse gas emissions come from livestock farming. So, if we eat less meat, we could significantly reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, some people would be willing to eat less meat, but they lack the willpower. Human engineering could help. <laughs> Just as some people are naturally intolerant to milk or crayfish, like myself, we could artificially induce mild intolerance to meat <laughs> by stimulating our immune system against common bo、uh, bovine proteins, and in this way, we can create an aversion to eating eco-unfriendly food. And we can do this, for example, by having meat patches, kind of like nicotine patches. <laughs> People can then wear these patches before they go out for dinner to curb their enthusiasm for eating meat. Here's a second example. Our ecological footprints are correlated with how big we are. A car uses more fuel to carry a larger person than a smaller person. Larger people also wear out shoes, carpets more quickly than smaller people. So, another possibility is to have smaller human beings. That's right, being small is environmentally friendly. Thank you. Just a 15 centimeter of reduction in height would mean a mass reduction of 23 percent for men and 25 percent for women. So how can we do this? We could use pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. This is something used in fertility clinics to screen for embryos with genetic diseases. We could use it to screen for children who will be smaller. Third example. <laughs> we can also reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by lowering birth rates. There's a direct link between cognition and lowering birth rates. In the U.S., people tend to have more children before age 18 if they have lower cognitive ability. So we could use cognitive enhancements like modafinil or Ritalin to lower birth rates. Final example: many environmental problems are the result of collective action problems where people are unwilling to cooperate for the greater good. But studies have shown that people given the hormone oxytocin were much more willing to share money with strangers, <laughs> and to behave in more trustworthy ways. Oxytocin also improves our ability to read other people's emotions, which is a key capacity for empathy. So we could use we could give people oxytocin in order to increase their willingness to cooperate with other people. So why should we take human engineering seriously? Because geoengineering is very risky. If if it goes wrong, geoengineering could end up destroying the entire planet. In contrast, the human engineering technologies that I've been talking about, PGD, oxytocin, are already safely available for other uses. Also, human engineering is applied at the individual level. So the risks are much more manageable than something like geoengineering, which takes place on a much, much larger scale. Finally, 
human engineering could also be more liberty-enhancing. In response to climate change, some, some people think that we should adopt China's one-child policy. This is very drastic. But given certain fixed allocation of greenhouse gas emissions, human engineering could give families a choice between having one large child, two medium-sized children, <laughs> or three smaller children. This is much more liberty-enhancing than a policy that says that you can only have one child. We are the cause of climate change. Maybe we are also the solution to it. Thank you. Thank you.